Um, hello. Hi. Um, yeah. Uh, so just let us wait uh, for a few minutes um, for others, other students to join. Okay. Maybe we can wait um, two more minutes. Um, let me share my screen. Mm. Okay. Um, all right, uh, we can get started. So can you see my screen, share the screen PowerPoint? Yeah, yes. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. So um, yeah, in this lecture, we're gonna uh, discuss about array antenna. Actually, we have learned about a single Hertz and dipole antenna. Um, we have like a piece of wire and then we get uh, current flowing along this um, metal's um, wire, then it'll radiate EM field. So that uh, we have um, calculated the radiation parent in, in a far zone. So um, the radiation parent looks like um, donut shape so that the power um, was radiated over a whole um, azimuthal direction. Okay, so that actually it was, um, it is very, um, this properties um, appropriate for a Wi-Fi antenna, Wi-Fi appli up, uh, application. Um, actually, yeah, you can, you have, yeah, looked this kind of a Wi-Fi antenna. Actually, it is not dipole antenna, it is a monopole antenna. It has just a, a metal bar here. But yeah, you're gonna learn about the image theory later so that if we place the monopole antenna on top of like a metal um, surface or a ground, then its performance um, is equivalent to that of the uh, Hertz and dipole antenna so that the user can easily access um, to Wi-Fi network. On the other hand, um, um, on the other hand, um, one needs like an uh, antenna with high directivity. For example, the uh, 5G application, 
uh, uses millimeter uh, wave like a, um, from like a 24 gigahertz to uh, 54 gigahertz. So in this case, uh, millimeter wave can't uh, travel well through the obstacles because they are uh, significantly absorbed by plants and rain so that the protocol should be different from the 4G. Actually, uh, 4G application, we have a base, uh, base station and then um, base station um, spread like a, a signal, um, like a, a three uh, different um, directions so that the user can access the network. On the other hand, um, in this 5G application, uh, we should uh, place like a, um, a lot of like a, a small cell antenna uh, around this um, this large antenna so that um, actually they should communicate uh, point to point wise, okay? So in this case, uh, we need uh, antenna with high directivity. Likewise, um, automate, automotive radar uh, should be able to detect like a uh, object in the vicinity of the car in real time and um, should be able to uh, measure where exactly the objects um, are and also the um, distance between vehicle and the object. In that case, uh, radar, um, radar should have like a, um, antennas with the high directivity or uh, and the beam steering capability. So in order to do that, um, actually we can use the array antennas. We can place a lot of um, heart and dipole antenna um, periodically or uh, periodically. Uh, so that uh, we can make uh, this like a sharp beam or the high directivity. So it is um, it is for the point to point uh, wireless communication. So in this lecture, uh, we're going to derive like a far field um, radiated by an array of Hertz and dipole antennas. Particularly, we're going to discuss a linear phase array and we're gonna see how uh, this array can enhance the directivity. And also we're gonna um, consider two examples, a broadside and end fire arrays. And then um, we're going to briefly look at um, when this far field approximation is valid. Uh, particularly, we're gonna derive like a condition uh, for us to use like safely use this uh, far field approximation. And then we are going to talk about like uh, three different zones, uh, near Fresnel and far zones, uh, widely used antenna uh, design and measurement. Um, okay, <clears throat> so um, let's recall um, what was the radiated field from um, uh, current density J so without any approximation, the exact form, exact form of the vector potential uh, was given by like um, uh, mu, the permeability and the volume integral over the volume of this um, um, current distribution. and um, <clears throat> uh, Green's function. Where uh, beta is a uh, wave number. However, it is very um, difficult to solve. So what we did actually in a far zone, a far zone means that our observation point, this is the observation a uh, point is far from the current density, then we can make um, we can make approximation uh, for this uh, denominator 
and also the uh, phase factor. Okay, I'm gonna call that um, amplitude, amplitude and uh, phase approximations. So that um, the far field um, vector potential, I'm gonna add like a F um, subscript um, standing for the uh, far field um, vector potential uh, was given by like a four pi r um, mu exponential j beta r. We can factor out like this, um, properly factor out this um, r and um, volume integral and the current distribution and um, just exponential j beta dot r dash. Uh, by the way, um, this r vector is like a position vector, ordinary position vector, okay? Uh, whereas uh, r dash is um, the position vector uh, for the current distribution, okay? So this is R dash, and this is R from the origin. And you can actually, let's say this is the equation one. So you can notice that um, you know, far jump, the field and the um, current distribution was related by uh, Fourier transform, okay? Like uh, um, integral and the kernel with the uh, exponential function so that they are related by a uh, Fourier uh, transform. So we can easily calculate um, the far field vector potential. Um, actually, we did not specify the current uh, distribution. So uh, let us now specify the current distribution, um, which models um, array of Horton dipole antennas. So we're going to assume that um, this is an X and Y uh, two-dimensional um, space. We're going to place um, Horton dipole at D naught and D1, D2, and so on. Okay. So we have like, let's say we have an N number of Horton dipole antennas. Okay, so, um, and also, let's say that, so that the current distribution is an array of Hurton dipole antennas aligned along X axis, okay? So they're aligned along X axis. Uh, while the current, current of each Hurton dipole antenna is flowing um, along Z axis. Okay, so your yeah, current is flowing um, to the direction perpendicular uh, to this paper. So then we can write explicitly, write the current distribution in this way. So the current is flowing Z axis and we have like a current and the length of the Hertzian dipole antenna. And um, for the first Hurton dipole antenna has like a amplitude and um, it is placed X dash uh, minus D naught, okay? Actually, um, <clears throat> this is X dash. <laughs> and the second, um, actually the second Hurton dipole uh, similarly 
um, x dash minus d1, blah, blah, blah. And the last one is going to be a m minus 1, um, delta x dash minus d m minus 1. Okay. This is for x dependent and times uh, their um, like a point y source. So we have like a delta function over y and z axis. Let's say this is equation two. Okay. Um, it should be mentioned that actually this um, a not a one and so on. Actually, they are complex values. Um, they are complex values. So encoding like a amplitude of current and the phase. Okay. Um, and then what we're going to do next, uh, we're going to substituting substitute equation two to one. Um, then um, vector, the far field vector potential is gonna be Z hat four pi R mu i are just uh, substituting this current distribution to the vector potential uh, exponential my j uh, minus j beta r and the volume integral uh, dr dash and just the uh, um, rewriting whole things inside this uh, volume integral blah 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 a n minus one dash n minus one times delta y dash <clears throat> delta y z dash exponential beta dot d dash r dash okay so in this case i mean the beta um, vector is going to be beta um, r hat that's because the wave is um propagating along um, r hat direction, radially yet uh, propagate. Uh, but our observation point on x, y plane, this is our um, observation point. So in this case, uh, this direction r hat is going to be a row hat. So beta rho hat Row hat can be uh, written x hat um, cosine pi phi uh, plus y hat uh, sine phi, okay? And also, what is the r dash? Actually, r dash is the, um, the position of the current distribution, in this case, the Hertzian dipole antennas are aligned along x axis, so x hat x dash. Okay, so that uh, beta vector uh, inner product with r dash is going to be just the um, r dash cosine phi. Okay, so we're going to. Um, plug in this term to this integral so that um, and then I mean it's going to be exponential j x dash cosine phi and then we're going to perform this volume integral actually the calculation of this volume integral is very easy that's because we have just a delta function with this exponential function. We can use the delta function sifting property, okay? So um, the vector potential, the resulting um, vector potential in a far zone is 
going to be z hat 4 pi r mu i l exponential minus, minus j beta r and just uh, just uh, a not uh, exponential um, j x dash is replaced by d naught okay beta d naught cosine phi and plus a one exponential j beta d one cosine phi blah 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 and the last term a minus one exponential uh, beta d n minus one cosine phi okay so this is gonna be so this is gonna be the far field expression uh, for an um, Hertzian dipole antenna array okay the generic Hertzian dipole antenna array. Uh, so are there any questions so far? Okay, yeah, looks very complicated. So um, we're gonna uh, next do, actually we can apply this uh, generic far field expression for a specific case which is the uh, linear phase array. Uh, let me delete this um, slide. So what is linear uh, phase array? Uh, is that um, all the Hertz and dipole, actually this is Hertz and dipole antenna array but uh, all Hertz and dipole antenna are equally spaced, okay? They are equally spaced. Meaning that, uh, let's say this is the Hertz and dipole antenna. Blah, blah, blah. Along X axis. So the spacing between nearest uh, Hertz and dipole antennas are D, so that the position of uh, nth Hertz and dipole antenna is gonna be N times D, okay? So this is, for example, this is the uh, naught, so it's gonna be zero, and D one, just the D, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and also, we're gonna assume that um, it has a linear uh, phase uh, progress, okay? Meaning that uh, we have assigned the, like a A naught, A1, A2, you know, which encode like a amplitude of current or phase of current, okay? But we are going to assume that uh, a not a sub n takes the form of exponential j n uh, psi. Okay, this is not phi, this is psi. That means that uh, a not is going to be one, and a one is going to be exponential j psi, is going to be uh, exponential j two psi, so that the relative phase difference between um, adjacent um, Hertz and dipole antennas and going to be uh, just a psi, okay? The relative uh, phase difference between, between um, yeah, nearest, nearest Hertz and dipole antennas, okay? So then let's apply uh, this to the generic uh, far field expression. Um, so um, 
let's say this is the equation three. Uh, then equation three is going to be a VR. It's going to be just the Z uh, four pi R. Uh, let me just close. Sorry about that. Uh, mu i l exponential j beta r all the same, but uh, now we have this a naught is going to be one, and there the uh, the phase term for the uh, first Hertz depth antenna is one, so that it's going to be one and plus exponential j Beta d cosine v plus phi. Yes. Okay. The second term is going to be two beta d cosine v plus psi. And blah blah blah. Exponential of the last term is going to be just the um, n minus one. Um, beta d cosine v plus psi, okay? So this is gonna be far field of the linear phase array. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so it is basically a series. So we can simplify this expression into a closed form um, solution by using uh, a Taylor uh, series, okay? So in Taylor series, uh, actually we can assume that uh, this term, this whole term as like a x, and this x uh, zero, x one, and this is gonna be x two, blah, 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 so that it's going to be uh, n from 0 to n minus 1, uh, x, n. So, based on, um, so that by using Taylor series, its closed form solution is going to be, take, it's going to take the form of this, okay? So, um, if we rewrite this one, it's going to be 4 pi r mu i l um, just uh, 1 minus exponential beta d cosine phi plus psi, 1 minus exponential j n um beta d cosine phi uh, plus psi okay so um yeah very um complicated uh mathematical manipulation we uh, finally arrived at uh arrive at this uh, expression This is far field um, vector potential from linear phase array. So um, what we're going to do next is that we're going to um, find the radiation parent uh, from this vector potential. The radiation parent, to calculate radiation parent, we should um, evaluate this um, electric field in a far field. So actually, what was the electric field? Electric field is the time derivative of vector potential or in a frequency domain, is it is uh, minus j omega uh, vector potential, okay? So um, in a far field, 
we can ignore the um, radio components so that we only have like a uh, LA, um, the theta component and also a phi component. Okay. However, our uh, vector potential here it only has a Z component, so it is orthogonal to the phi component, so uh, it's going to be zero. And also, um, our observation point is on the X, Y plane, meaning that X, Y is, let's say. So our observation point, let's say this is our observation point, R. It is on the X, Y plane, in this case, the theta is going to be pi over two, so that a theta uh, looks like this. This is the a theta, so which is like a minus uh, minus z and a z. Okay, so that uh, it's gonna be just the j omega um, vector field that we have found here. Okay. So the radiation pattern is just the, um, the absolute value of the electric field. So let's evaluate the uh, absolute value of this um, electric field. So just the electric field is just the J omega times uh, vector potential that we have found. And we can, all, uh, we can factor out all the factors um, into the A naught, which does not depend on a uh, fee. <clears throat> okay, for example, like uh, J uh, J omega and mu I R, uh, something like that. And then um, we have like uh, this term, which depends on phi, one minus uh, exponential J beta D and cosine phi plus psi, or minus exponential j n, eta d cosine phi plus psi. Okay. Um, let's use the Euler um, formula. Then it's gonna be we can yeah change the exponential function to sine. So uh, it's gonna be sine uh, one over two and beta d cosine phi plus psi. And similarly, um, n over two beta d cosine phi plus psi. So let's take a closer look at this term. So what is this? Uh, actually, uh, this looks like a um, sine and x over uh, sine x, uh, where x is this, this whole term, okay? Actually, this is like, a, this is called the digital, uh, digital sync function. Um, it looks like um, actually the access uh, x contains the phi. So over phi, it looks like um, some <clears throat> Um, some lobe, um, which is a local maxima, enhanced lobe, enhanced lobe, and um, um, some smaller lobe. So that um, actually, this is the uh, radiation parent. Is a function of um, phi, okay? 
So actually, um, previously the the single Hertzian dipole antenna, it does not have any uh, factor like this radiation parent depend, depending on phi so that the radiation parent of the single Hertzian dipole antenna is just a circle. It means that it radiate power over whole azimuthal direction. On the other hand, um, if we make them a linear phase array, linear uh, phase array, then depending on n and um, depending on n and the psi and the beta t, yeah, it, it can um, we can achieve like a very sharp beam with some side low so that uh, it can radiate uh, more power over a specific direction in this case, like a um, V, for example, yeah, V zero or V uh, is equal to pi. So that uh, we have uh, like a high Directivity compared with the previous the single Hertzian dipole antenna. Again, this is the yeah key result of this linear um, array. The physical uh, reason why we have this term, why we have this enhanced uh, factor, is that. Actually, the um, array of this Hertzian dipole antenna, the field produced by uh, each um, Hertzian dipole antenna are constructively interfere with each other so that uh, for a specific direction, it has a uh, constructive um, interference, but in some direction, in some direction, it has a destru destructive direct um, interference so that the smaller power um, is radiated over that direction, okay? So this is constructive interference is destru destructive interference. Um, so are there any questions so far? Nope, uh, we have only uh, 13 minutes. So yeah, let me uh, go over uh, the re remaining part faster. So yeah, this is two examples that we can achieve from that uh, the linear phase array. For example, if we let the uh, beta D is pi, and um, there's no phase um, progress then um, actually because the beta is the two pi over D. So D is gonna be um, just the lambda over two, so half wavelength. There's no phase um, um, progress. And also in this case, total number of the array it's gonna be five. So yeah, we have like a, a five Hertzian dipole antennas. And then if we calculate the this equation six with this parameter, actually we can obtain this um, field pattern, okay? So we have a, a main lobe, main node here along the broad side direction. Actually, broad side direction is defined by the direction um, perpendicular to the aligned axis of this Hertzian dipole um, antennas, okay? In this case, X axis. The end fire direction is defined the parallel with that axis, okay? So 
the older arrays are constructively the red I mean I mean the radiated fields are constructively interference um, along this broadside direction. On the other hand, the smaller lobes or side lobes are formed along end fire direction. Uh, on the other hand, if we set the beta D as a pi so that the D is going to be half wavelength, but in this case, the, uh, there is a um, linear phase like a pi, and if we set like a total number of arrays four, and if we similarly, if we calculate the field in equation six, then we can obtain like this uh, radiation pattern. In this case, it is interesting to uh, observe that the main lobe is formed um, along our uh, end fire direction. That's because we have a um, linear phase, um, non-zero linear phase, okay? So then um, um, yeah, let us uh, move on to the next topic. So when uh, when this far field approximation is, is valid, okay? So let me write down the exact uh, form which was like uh, this integral. And the far field um, with approximation is going to be uh, 4 pi r mu exponential my j beta and um, so in order in order for us to arrive at the lower I mean the bottom equation from the top what we have assumed is two actually the denominator was approximated by one over r and um, this is one assumption the other assumption is that actually um, the exponential minus j beta minus r dash was approximated by uh, j beta r uh, plus um, beta dot r dash okay so um we're going to focus on like a, this second assumption the to do this let's look at this term the absolute value of this r minus r dash squared uh, we can rewrite this one as like an inner product between, uh, I mean, inner product of uh, r minus r dash. It's going to be r squared as 2 r r dash uh, plus r squared. Okay. Um, then it's, we can factor out r squared terms. So 2 r. Now we can take the square root of it, then we are over okay. So uh, let's take this whole thing as an x, and then this one is r one plus x. We can um, use this Taylor series. So that um, it's going to be 1 plus 1 over 2x minus um, 1 over 8x squared, blah, blah, blah. 
we can um, explicitly rewrite this so that uh, what we have is r minus r hat r dash. Uh, by the way, r is the r hat times r. Okay, r hat is unit vector, and plus one over two and uh, r dash square and r is one over two r hat dash r dash square r so actually it turns out that um, if we take the first two terms from um, this um, for the absolute value of this displacement uh, vector, then it's gonna be uh, the far field approximation for uh, the phase vector. Okay. So um, we can ignore the higher order term as long as um, actually, the order of these terms is going to be r dash square over r, and also um, r hat dot r dash is always uh, less than r dash. So it is also of the order r dash squared r, so that um, if we multiply the beta, this order, and if this order is going to be uh, far less than unity, so that uh, we can ignore uh, this higher order term, okay? So that we can recover the um, far field approximation. So again, if this, this condition is ensured, then you can use uh, a far field approximation. Um, and then um, let's talk about these three zones near Fresnel and far zones. If we have antenna, antenna will uh, radiate field. So we can um, actually the radiated field, um, I mean, the characteristic of EM field uh, varies uh, depending on the distance between this antenna. So we can uh, broadly divide the region into two, I mean, the near field and the far field. Of course, in a far field, we know that the radiated field um, can be approximated by uh, spherical waves, the wave front. And if you look at this spherical wave locally, then it's almost like a plane wave. Okay, now what is the property of plane wave is that electric field is perpendicular to the magnetic field and also they should be perpendicular to the uh, propagation direction. And uh, near field um, can be further divided by two regions. One is that um, reactive near field. The other one is the radiative near field. It is also called the Fresno um, region. Actually, the reactive near field is the region um, where the fields are non, um, almost non-radiated, but they are reactive so that the energy um, is um, transferred back and forth between the source and the near field. So this is a reactive uh, energy. Um, in the uh, radiated near uh, zone or Fresnel zone, actually field um, uh, starting uh, radiating, however, it is not um, completely a spherical wave, but it's kind of transition between this near field and uh, far field. So fields are um, 
still uh, significantly vary with the uh, distance. So it's kind of intermediate uh, zone between um, non-radiated and um, radiated far field zone. Um, actually, yeah, th this is the um, this is a count, kind of a boundary between this is a distance boundary between the near and the fresnel zone and uh, this is the fresnel zone and the far field okay this is this distance is called the uh, uh, Rayleigh distance actually uh, out of time so let me just briefly describe this red light distance. Um, so in a near field, we have a uh, non-radiated field, but intermediate uh, region, which is the fresnel region, the field look like, I mean, if the aperture radiated radi field, EM field, this is the aperture, uh, Gaussian, and it'll take like a Gaussian beam in the fresnel zone, in a far field, you know, they take the form of spherical wave. Okay. The very light distance is between uh, the boundary between this uh, Fresnel zone and the far field zone. So, um, actually, the detailed mathematical derivation for this is um, displayed in lecture notes, so you can uh, refer to lecture notes. So this is all that I prepared. Um, are there any questions? Um, yeah, um, a little very complicated mathematical things, but again, the key idea is that if we make curtain dipole antennas in an array, uh, this kind of um, factor appears so that we can achieve the high directivity. That, that's the um, key thing. And depending on the design parameter, like a D and a linear phase, or we can make a broadside uh, antenna or end, end fire antenna. And we have um, inspect. We have inspected like a um, condition when a far field approximation is valid. And also, we have discussed about near Fresnel and Fargens and uh, characteristics of um, radiated. I mean, um, field created by antenna uh, in each zone. Okay, um, so we can stop here. So thank you for joining uh, today. Thank you. Thank you.